God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now. Father, we thank you right now, God, for what you are doing in this moment and in this hour. Father, we welcome you. You are welcome into this intimate session, into this intimate place with us, God. You are welcome into this intimate moment. Father, we know that it's all about you. It's about your kingdom coming in our lives and your will being done through us on earth as it is in heaven, Father God. So we thank you right now for this moment. Hallelujah. We welcome in your presence. We welcome in your spirit. Holy Spirit, take over as Josie takes the back seat. I pray that you will begin to take over and speak a word into your daughters. Cause this empowerment session to ignite something within them, Father, that would awaken anything that is asleep, that would awaken anything that has been on the uh, shelf for so long, God. I pray you will send a spiritual wind wherever they are to dust off anything that has been on the shelf too long, God. I pray, Lord, you will resurrect their dreams, resurrect their goals, resurrect those things you have promised them, God, in their hearts. And I pray, Lord, that you would just blow a wind right now, God, of resurrection, God, a, re a wind of resurrection, God, that will resurrect anything, God, that they thought was dead, including God. Those things that they placed in their heart, God, and they said, Father, we just I just don't know if this is what you want me to do. But I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will send clarity to your daughters right now, Father God. I pray, Lord, that this word will reach the hearts of your daughters and that it will bring God such a peace to whatever it is that they have been trusting you for. Even if they felt like God in the past season, something did not work. I pray, Lord, right now, God, that you will cause, God, those things to come back up into their remembrance. Holy Spirit, send it back to their remembrance. Holy Spirit, allow your spirit to touch their hearts and touch their minds and cause those things that they forgot to come back up, God. I pray right now, Lord, for your spirit to dwell and abide in this moment. Holy Spirit, the revelator, reveal all things that you want to reveal in this moment. I yield so that you may have your way. I don't know what your daughters may need. So just in case you want to move us and shift us in a different direction, Holy Spirit, you have permission. Holy Ghost, have your way. You can speak in your heavenly language if you want to. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. As we touch and agree with heaven right now for whatever it is that heaven wants to do on the behalf of, of, of your daughters, God, whatever it is that you want to do in this hour, we touch and agree with you right now as we touch on being enough and as we talk about getting started and as we talk about, Father, having enough, I pray that something will erupt in the heart of your daughter. I pray that heaven will touch down and erupt in the life of your daughters. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would do what only you can do, transcend beyond this camera lens, transcend beyond the physical realm, transcend beyond these barriers of these... Uh, of these uh, limitations by these uh, computers and phones and go in and do your perfect will in the lives of your daughters. As we pray, God, I trust you, Lord, that you would do what only you can do in this hour, that we give you full access, for we relinquish our stand of what we think is right, even through much studying and much talking to you. Father, we know, God, that sometimes you change the script. So, Lord, we thank you right now for all that you would do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust you right now, God, to be the revealer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we will give you all of the glory. We thank you for being the one to give vision. We thank you for being the one to reveal. We thank you one for uh, making known, God, your perfect will, God. We thank you right now that we are not clueless to what it is. We thank you that we were created for such a time as this. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you have chosen us. 
that you predestined us, that you have ordained us, that you have set us in this earth for such a time as this, that we will rise to the top, that we will accomplish great and mighty exploits for the kingdom purpose, that we will accomplish whatever you have sent forth out for us to do. Father, because we are your word, we thank you that you are sending us forth to accomplish that what you have called us to do in the earth. Because we are your word, we thank you right now, God, how you are watching over us to perform that which you've spoken in our lives, that which you are predestined for us to do in the earth. Father, we won't hold back. We won't We won't um, be quiet in this hour. We won't be timid. We won't be shy. But we will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord our God. We will stand still and see the destiny that you have called us to be birthed in the earth. And we will not stop until we have done all that you've called us to do. We will not stop until we see the manifestation of the promises you have promised us. We will not stop, God, until we come into agreement and alignment with your perfect and most holy will for our lives. Father, we need you, God, to speak to our spirit in this moment, to come into our, in, into our atmosphere and release answers, release your wisdom, release your strategies, release your blueprint, release the next level, release what you have for us, release God, Father, hallelujah, we ask you to release God, what only you can do, God, we thank you right now, God, for transcending beyond the normal, beyond the physical, Father, hallelujah, we thank you, God, and may this, may this session of empowerment be covered under the blood. May this session of empowerment be covered under your under the shadow of your wings. May this session and empowerment truly, God, do wonders and miracles on today. We believe you for it. We know you're able. Now, Father, do what only you can do. And touch down. Let the kingdom come and touch down. And let your will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just now getting warmed up. If you haven't done so already, please share this. If you have not already done so, please share this. Because it's another woman who needs to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's not me. It's going. It's not going to be me that will be empowering you. It will literally be a moment of empowerment with God. This is why we call it a moment of empowerment with God. When, Women's Wednesday Empowerment Sessions. Are, are created to empower you with God. And so we're going to go ahead and go and dive into our topic for today as I digress. Please continue to worship if you feel like it, but I am going to digress and move forward in the word. Make sure that you have pen and paper ready because you are going to have to, this word is going to urge you to take notes. And you're going to literally have to capture the moment. Some things, y'all, you have to just grab. Because sometimes while you flowing, while things are flowing, you can't write, you can't slow down and write. So some of these things, you may not have time to slow down and write because it may get real juicy and good. Take the nuggets, but just catch it in the spirit. Catch it as I flow, Okay. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all for sharing, for liking, for commenting, for telling me, you know, how this has blessed you even. Make sure that you put where you are, um, what city you are located in. Make sure you put where you are coming from. I want to hear from you. I want to know uh, uh, where the chosen tribe is coming from so that we can just shout you out. And uh, I, I bless God for each and every one of y'all lives. So. Now that you have your pen and paper ready, if you don't, I want you to pause this and wait until you get into a place where you can actually write and take notes, or you can listen to it, go back, take notes later, whatever works for you, okay? So I am reading my notes that I have written down. I had to take it out of my head and write it down so that I can remember, okay, because it was a lot that I had to uncover, me and God talked about. So uh, again, our topic for today is you are enough. And you have enough. Get started. You are enough. You have enough. Now it's time for you to get started. Listen. Oh, God. Sometimes we feel like we are not equipped to walk 
walk out in the things that God has called us to. This is simply not true. You are equipped. Somebody put that in the comment. Say, I am equipped. Let me tell you how you are equipped. You are equipped because God qualifies the ones he has called. And that means you. That includes you. God has qualified you uh, to do what he has placed you here to do on the earth. You do go through a process to be equipped. Yes, you do. You go, you've been going through a process before you even realize that you wanted to receive or accept God as your Lord and Savior. As a matter of fact, our process starts the moment of conception. So somebody write that down. Our processes start the moment of conception because God with his mind and with his word spoke us into existence. Each and every human being has been spoken into existence. Whether you want to receive God as your Lord and Savior or not, whether you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that he died for your rose on the third day for you so that you can have life and life to the fullest or not. Listen, he still spoke all of us into existence and we were a thought in his imagination before he spoke it. So I want you to understand that you are on assignment the moment that you are conceived and placed in the belly of your mother's womb. And when she pushes you out, the doctor tap you on your butt, however you woke up or however you are here, whether you had to be whatever your story was during birth, but you are here. And so I want you to know that at that moment is really when your process began. This uh, thing called process, it did not just, uh, it did not just start when the moment that you said, okay, I'm going to do what God asked me to do. Okay. No. And I know sometimes that we have a hard time discovering what God has asked us to do, but that's not for this topic today. But long story short, I want you to know that it didn't start the moment that you confessed Jesus, nor did it start when you said, God, okay, I want to do you. Absolutely not. Way long ago, before you could even think, before you could even speak, before you could even breathe, walk, taste, hear, smell, all of the above, this process has started. So, Moving on down into my notes. So today, I want you to dive in for a word that will empower you to move forward into the things that God has set just for you to do in the earth. And did you know that the earth is literally waiting for you to arrive? Yes, the earth is groaning, just waiting for the sons and daughters of God to arise. And that includes you. Somebody put that in the comment section. That includes me. Hallelujah. Now, if you have already stepped up into the things that God have called you to, then just keep listening because you may be able to take notes on other things. But to the ones who feel like I just have not stepped up, I'm not, I'm running from the call. I don't really know what it is. Don't know how to find it. And so I have found myself in a difficult place. That's okay. But just know that the earth is groaning, is waiting for you. The Bible says that the earth is groaning as it waits for the arrival of the sons of God, is waiting for the sons of God to arise, to arrive, to step up, to take your rightful place in the earth. For some of you, this is why you've been going through pure turmoil in your life because you refuse to answer the call on your life. That comes with a price. It comes with a consequence. When we don't do what we are placed here on the earth to do, the earth groans. And a part of that groaning is you feeling in your spirit turmoil and you're going through ups and downs, left to right, because you have not answered that call. Now, I hope that that just broke chains off of some of you. And I pray that that brought revelation to y'all because, listen, y'all... I understand what it's like to be going through and not understanding why you're going through it. Listen, that is that is the pain that we have to endure when we refuse to answer God's call. And it prepares us at the same time for the call. So it's a duo effect. So I'm going to move on down into my notes. God's plan for you is not that you go into cycles. Aiming at the wind, just hoping you will land somewhere. But it is God's plan to prosper you. And just as his word said that he wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. That's the plan of God for you. That's one of his plans. And this cannot happen, family, 
if, <coughs> excuse me, if you are stuck. And so I just want to help you to recognize what may be causing the stagnation so that I can give you also not just to show you what may be causing a stagnation, but I want to help you with a plan that you that will help you to be able to change that. I want to help you to be able to come out of that stagnation. And how many of y'all know that it really starts in your mind? It really starts in the way that you think. Stagnation can be broken by the thoughts that you think on a regular basis. And, 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 and so I want to say this, that little do people know what truly really hold them back. So y'all get ready for the kingdom tea that I have to deliver to y'all today because it's going to help you to overcome those hurdles and help you step out into your 2023 with a bang. Because listen, it's not time. This is not the hour for you to draw back and say, I don't know what my purpose is anymore. Listen, y'all don't have no excuse. It's so much information that God has allowed us to share. Me being one of the ones on my channel, I release content about purpose, about owning who you are authentically, you know, stepping in your stepping into your destiny um, and just walking into everything that God has called you to walk into. And I'm not the only one. There are many other leaders on all over social media in your personal life that have really been, you know, sent by God to help you to um, figure out what that is. So if you are still struggling with that, uh, it's OK. But I want you to get out of the mindset of uh, I don't know. And I want you to focus on. Uh, but I'm going to figure it out. And you can always ask God to show you, God, show me my purpose, reveal to me, what are the plans that you have for my life? Show me what I am put here to do. You got to steal away, pull away from everything, pull away for a moment and just ask God that question. What am I sitting here to do? And I guarantee you, God will not fail you in this. He will not fail you. He didn't fail me. He not a respect the person. He not going to fail you. So I want to move on down just a little bit further. So now that we have all of that info out of the way, and I just thought wanted to start that off as my foundation, I want to move deeper. And I want to also tap on why you are not moving. So why are you not moving? Fear is one of the number one reasons, y'all, why we are not moving. Fear is a thing that blocks you. It can block you if you let it. It can cripple you if you let it. Um, fear will lie to you and fear also will slowly kill your dreams little by little. Okay. Fear also helps you to sabotage and quit self-sabotage and quit. Okay. Fear will tell you, I don't know why you're doing this. Uh, you don't have enough skills. I don't know why you're trying to do all of this new stuff that you ain't got no training for. Fear will talk you out of a God idea. Write that down. And so why are you not moving forward into the things God have called you to, even though I'm sitting here telling you that you are enough and you have enough, get started. If fear is blocking you, it is a stronghold you need to deal with. And um, we're going to talk about how to deal with that later on down. Uh, but I just wanted to start by saying this could be a major thing of why you're not moving forward. And we don't want that. I want you to know that God has equipped you with everything you need. And he expects you to use it to help others. And where I found this scripture at was in 1 Peter 4 and 10. And the Bible says, as each one has received a gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So as you serve in your gift, you are, God gives you grace to serve in that gift. And your gift is not for you. Of course, as I just read, it's used to serve. God put it in you to help other people, to serve other people. And so God has equipped you with everything you need and he expects you to use it to help other people. You have literally no excuse, but sometimes strongholds can stop us. Sometimes our challenging beliefs can stop us. But I want to go a step further and talk about what else can hinder you. What else can hinder us from 
really walking into our, uh, you know, into the things that God have called us to walk into. What else? What else can hinder us? What else can um, stop us from uh, getting started on the things that God have told us to work on? You know, and you know that God has told you to work on it. And then in the next token, you questioning, did God tell you? And and we already dealt with fear. We know that fear will, 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 will be one of the things that will cause you to feel that. So another thing I want to talk about on what else can hinder us from walking it out and getting started and believing that we are enough and just doing what God asked us to do. I want to talk about the imposter syndrome. I don't know if y'all have heard about this. Many of us have heard about this. And I feel like for a lot of people, a lot of, uh, you know, in this culture, it's, it's what I've heard. The majority of people I've heard talk about this is women. And so we're going to talk about it a little bit today. Um, and we're going to also talk about what imposter syndrome is. So as I was saying, sometimes it's the imposter syndrome that's holding you back. And to be real with y'all, the imposter syndrome is still low key rooted in fear. It can be rooted in a lot of other things as well. So let's talk about the other things that it can be rooted in outside of fear. The imposter syndrome, it can be root, uh, it can also happen because if somebody had pressured you uh, when you was in school. OK, even though it may also be because somebody else pressures you to do well in school, you know, don't mean that fear ain't still at the root. So one of the ways that the imposter syndrome happens in our adulthood um, is because of being pressured by other people in school to do things. You know, if you've ever if you think about it, peer pressure uh, causes us to do things that we are not supposed to do. And you got to have a strong mind to not move and do when other people are forcing you or pushing you through peer pressure to do it. And so imposter syndrome shows up in our adult stages in life because when we were kids, uh, we were pressured in school. We were made to do things that we didn't want to do. We felt like we just had to do certain things. You know, another one is being compared to your siblings. Oh, this one is better than this one. Oh, this brother is better than this brother. Oh, this sister is better than this sister. Oh, the parent treating the other siblings more better. Okay. Another thing um, is that if you were under a controlling atmosphere as a child, an overprotective atmosphere, um, or if you have been, if people have sharply criticized your mistakes, um, because again, it's also rooted in insecurities. So when other people criticize your mistakes, um, when we are younger, that stuff gets into our spirit. And sometimes those things create insecurities within us and it causes us to doubt everything that we do. So sometimes we don't even understand why we're operating or allowing fear or allowing imposter syndrome to come in because of the fact that we have become accustomed to all of the things that I'm talking about or either one of the things that I'm talking about. One thing on this list probably have already struck that accord with you in one way or another. And you might have felt, I'm sorry, y'all. And you might have felt as if though that, you know, I'm not good enough. Because that's all you heard. I'm not good enough. Who going to sell me? Who going to like it? You know, it's so much insecurities attached to the imposter syndrome. So we have to be mindful of that when we are considering the things of God. And when we um, get the call on our lives to step out into ministry and God said, come on, it's your time. We have to check these things because if we don't, that can hinder us from stepping out and from getting started on the things that God have told us to get started on. So what is the imposter syndrome? I'm glad you asked. And I think that, hold on y'all one second. Somebody is at my front door and I have to go answer it. 
Give me just one second. I'm sorry. I will be right back. Give me just one second. Okay, y'all, I am back. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so what is the imposter syndrome? The imposter syndrome is people who struggle um, and in, in, in their thoughts and they believe that they are undeserving of their achievement achievements and the high esteem in which they are. In fact, generally held. You have all the you have all of the degrees behind your name. You went to seminary school. You done been through the fire and the rain because some of y'all have literal hands on experience on top of maybe some schooling or maybe you didn't get much schooling. But God and the Holy Ghost have literally sent you through a process. And now you have so much experience because God don't care nothing about your diplomas and all of that. He qualifies those who he called. And so the thing is, is that we as humans, we care about that stuff. That make us feel good. But it, it don't really, God is not, God is not interested in our titles. And so what we have to understand is, you know, with this imposter syndrome, it make you feel like you are a fraud. It make you feel like you are fake. It make you feel like you, you, you really don't know what you know. And, and then this is how fear can come in too, because, and it is at the root of it, because you have a fear of what people would think about you now. You And when you know that you have the experience and you know that you literally got what it takes to help people get results, you know that you got what it takes to help other people to, you know, evolve and become greater in some way or another. You have literally... Um, went through some type of process, whether you, I don't care what it was, and God has delivered you and brought you out and through, and you still feel as if though, I'm not good enough. This ain't working. This ain't, you know, uh, if, if I put this out here, people are going to think that I'm a fraud. Oh, people really know my history. They really know my past. Who cares? Because sometimes we mistake, oh, the spirit of rejection for the actual, what it really is, is the imposter syndrome. Cause sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, what are they going to think of me? Or whether this, or what are they going to say? If I put this project out there, if I put this podcast out there, if I create this book and upload it, what are they really going to think about me? When in all actuality, could it be imposter syndrome and not the spirit of rejection? Because imposter syndrome it will, it will have you thinking about the opinions of people because when you were younger, that seed was planted in you because all people did was criticize you. They ostracized you. They, they low, they, they had a, they had a way of trying to cause you to be lower than what you really were. So then uh, if you're not careful, rejection can attach itself to that, but it's not always rejection that a person is dealing with. Uh, rejection means that you know you feel like everybody is out to get you and and nobody really accepts you and nobody really loves you and nobody really cares about you and everything that people do like you won't even move out because everything people do it will really concern you and you care more about the opinions of people than you do uh you know what God has spoken to you and so uh I have dealt with that and I also have dealt with the imposter syndrome because it was certain times I was like, man, if I release this book, you know, it's something I need to be releasing right now, if I could be real with you. Uh, and I have to also be one to move past imposter syndrome because when you have a certain level of success with God, 
you know, or in your career or whatever it may be, you just have to trust that, okay, like this is me. And I've done, and I've done this with the strength of, through the strength of the Lord. And I really do have the skills and the training that I need to be able to help these people. And I really do deserve to actually get paid for it. The imposter syndrome sometimes can show up and say, anybody gonna pay you for that? You don't really have the knowledge that you say you got. You don't really got it like you pretend that you have. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to say that. So what other excuses do we have that stops us from being able? Now that we off the imposter syndrome, we're moving on to the next thing. What other excuses do we be having that can also cripple us or uh, prolong us from stepping out into the things that God had told us to do? I don't have enough education, which is also included in the posture syndrome. I do not have uh, the money or the resources. My time is limited. I don't have enough time to start this. I don't have enough time to do that. I don't have enough resources for this. I don't have enough. Listen, it's many excuses that we can make. But sometimes that's rooted in fear of, of the unknown and fear of I don't really know all that God has asked me to do. and and so I'm just going to do nothing. Well, I don't really know the direction to take. And so I'm just not going to take any way at all. You know, and either way, you know, you're going to get results either way. So whatever it is that you believe you're going to end up getting those results, either some way or another, them results going to come in. And so you have to be mindful of these things. I hope that this is good. I hope that this is helping y'all and I hope that you guys are taking notes. Yes, yes, yes. Put it in the chest. Let me know how y'all are doing. Let me know if this is helping you, if this is blessing you. If you made it this far to this video, let me know, let me know, let me know, let me know. We are getting ready to move on to the latter part of this. And let's go ahead and talk about how can you overcome this. And by this, I mean... How do you overcome being stagnant on the things that God have asked you to do or delaying the things that God have asked you to do or putting off things that God have asked you to do? How do you overcome this? And so I'm so glad that you asked. Number one, and also two, how do you step out and just do what God has asked you to do? So number one, I want you to write this down. Believe in yourself and believe in the one who sent you. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in what's in you. And that goes back to earlier what I was saying. If you don't know your purpose, if you don't know what's in you, that needs to be your first step. Asking God to show you and reveal to you. Get in a quiet place. Steal away from everything. Cut everything off. All distractions for, 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 for about two to three weeks. All distractions. Cut it off. And begin to just really pull on God and go into the secret place and really call on him. Okay? You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to trust that what God put in you is good enough. You got to believe that what he put in you, he didn't make a mistake. You got to believe that what he put in you is true, is accurate, is real, is powerful, is effective. You got to believe in yourself. You got to say, self, I believe in you. Therefore, we moving in this. We moving forward. I believe in what you have in your belly. I believe in what God has placed on the inside of you. You got to have those talks with those uh, and, you know, with your inner self. And, 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 and this will help you to shut out the inner critic, to silence that voice that talks to you, that talk back to you, to tell you, hey, girl, I don't know why you're trying to make this decision. This is the stupidest decision you could have ever made trying to launch something new, trying to be a trailblazer. Talking about you a generational leader and a curse breaker. Talking about you are, you're part of the chosen tribe. Listen, don't listen to that voice because it's a liar. So believing in yourself means that you affirm yourself. It means that you trust what God has put on the inside of you. But that's not the only thing. You got to also believe in the one who sent you. So you got to believe that God sent, that God is who he is. You got to believe and come into divine agreement 
that God didn't make a mistake on you. And when you believe in the one who sent you and when you know that he has formed you and when you know that he has created you and when you know the power of I am, when you understand the God presence that lives on the inside of you and when you understand why he have why he made you and how he shaped you and formed you in his image, meaning you supposed to have a nature after his nature. See, when you understand these things and then that, that helps you to be able to move forward and to step out on what he has called you to do. Because if you don't believe in the one who sent you, how can you step out effectively in the things he asked you to do? You don't even believe that in him. You don't even believe in him. You don't trust in him. You don't, you don't believe that what he put in you was even good enough. So how can he, because uh, it takes faith. So how can he do more if you don't believe in what he has done and if you don't believe in him? So how can you overcome this? Let's talk about the fact that you had the idea in the first place. And I want you right now to just put that idea in the forefront of your imagination and begin to put on the things that you that you know that God placed in your heart. The fact that you could think of it, the fact that you could dream it, the fact that you could see it means that it's possible. But you have to get beyond all these other things before you can actually really tap into the possibilities. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the fact that you had the idea in the first place, it really is a sign that you can actually go after that and accomplish it. Yeah, it may be bigger than you. Yeah, you may not know how you're going to get it done. Yeah, you may not be perfect when you start. Yeah, you may feel inadequate and all of the above. But it does not mean that, that those things are true. Those things could be a limited belief that you have, but limited belief systems can be changed, but it takes repetition. It takes you to want to have a paradigm shift. It takes a shift in your mind. It, change, it takes you to really change the way you think. So the fact that you had the idea in the first place, let's talk about that. Because God is not just randomly just doing stuff. You don't just randomly just have things and desires that you have. And I want you to understand this, even when it connects to your purpose, because look, those desires that you have to be a doctor, to be a nurse, to be a fitness coach, to be a life coach, to be a motivational speaker, to do your podcast, to live your dream life. Listen, all those things God put in you. And so just like, you was able to accomplish certain things in your life and reach milestones. Believe God for the other things as well. Believe that he's going to birth out the podcast. Believe that he's going to birth out that book. Believe that he's going to birth out that ministry, whatever your ministry is. Just believe that God is going to literally do that thing for you. Believe that he will. So I want you to think about that. Just a mere fact that you had the idea in the first place. Just the thought of what you're trying to build shows me that this thing is literally possible. It is possible for you to accomplish and attain that which you are believing God to do and that which you are seeing in your mind. Okay. So I want to go down to the next point. I want to talk about how God helps us when we uh, remember that we are simply enough. Remember that you are enough. You have enough. You are enough. And it's just time to get started. And when you trust him, God will help you. He will strengthen you and he will uphold you with his right hand of righteousness. God will literally lead and guide you in the realm of your destiny. When you trust him with it, when you trust him to hold you because you know he holds your future. So when you trust him to lead and guide you in the way that you should go and you take yourself out of the picture and say, you know what? This ain't even about me. I didn't create myself. I didn't make myself. I don't even know myself to the depths of me enough to try to figure out how to get this purpose accomplished in the earth. So it literally takes God to help you. But it starts with you realizing you are simply enough. And I want you to put that in the com in the comment section and say, I am enough. I want you to look and affirm yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I am enough. 
Say it with conviction. Say it with authority. Say it with power. Say it like you know that you mean it. And say, I am enough. And I'm going to move down to the next point. Having the revelation of who God is will help you in this. Because God is big. He created the whole universe. He created you and me and everything you see and do not see. It all came from him. We are a reflection of his very nature. And that's important for you to know. Because in the beginning in Genesis 1, 1 through 31, when God was forming all of this, when he got down to us, he told us our assignment in the earth. He told us what he wanted us to do. He told us what he what he what he what he what he, what he expected from us. I'm so sorry, y'all. He told us that somebody was calling me. He told us what he expected of us. He told us be fruitful and multiply. Take dominion over the earth, over the birds, over the fish, over every creeping thing on the earth. He told us to take dominion. And he told us be fruitful and multiply. He told us to manage the earth. He told us to manage over the livestock and over the birds and over the fish. You know, he told us we have we have dominion over that. He said, I want you to dominate in this earth realm. He he also gave us the ability to speak things out of our mouth and to create. He's a creator, God, which means you are a creator daughter, which means you are a creator. You are creative by nature, just by nature, because you are made in the image and after the likeness of God. So whatever you see your father do, you got to be like Jesus. I don't do nothing that I don't see my father do. I only do what I see my father do. And you got to have that same sonship with God. Like, listen, I only do what I see him do. I only speak what I hear him speak. I only move how I see God move. And anything beneath that, I may, I may need to check that because God didn't call me to anything beneath that. And it's times we have to check ourselves and say, no, nah, you operating too low. I got to come on up. And it is what it is. I want to move on to the next point because the time is far spent and we getting down close to the end. The next thing I want to say, when you do it this time, you will be doing it with him. See, the last time that you tried to launch that project, that you tried to launch that business, that you tried to launch that assignment, that you tried to go back to school, that you tried to get married. The last time you didn't do it with him, you didn't do it in him, you didn't do it with his consent. But this time, family. I want you to adapt the habit of using kingdom principles. You're going to use kingdom principles and you can do uh, one of the a great scripture and a great principle is found in St. John 15, 1 through 8. That's a, that's a great scripture to literally apply to your life. Because like he said, if you abide in me, I will abide in you for out without me, you can do nothing. That's what St. John 15, one through eight say for without me. And it say more than that, but for without God, you can do absolutely nothing. So the next thing I want to say is faith without works is dead. And James 2, 14 through 26. <clears throat> It's how James, the apostle, talks about, you know, how faith with works is purely dead. Faith without works, I'm sorry, is purely dead. You know, and we have to understand that we can't just think a thing. We can't just uh, have faith. Oh, I believe that this is possible. Oh, I believe I have hope that this can happen. We must also apply works for what we are believing in God for. We must, we must get up and do at the end of the day because you can talk, but if you don't get up and do, nothing will happen. So that means you literally got to be hands on with your vision. You got to be 10 toes down with your vision. You got to be ready to hit the ground running with your vision. And now that we have discussed what could be hindering you, now I'm telling you what could help you, 
what could literally cause you to be able to move and, and move beyond these limitations that have been circling around you for so many years because God didn't give you these limitations. These limitations came by way of your childhood and seeds that were sown over a course of time. And so somebody say, God is uprooting every evil seed, every seed of sabotage, every seed of dysfunction, every evil cycle, he's, he's canceling it. I need you to pray. I need you to speak it. I need you to declare God is doing a new thing. He's uprooting the old and planting the new. The next point I want to tell you, use your talents and gifts. It is the will of God for you as his child for you to use your talents and your gifts. The Bible declares in Proverbs 18, verses 16, and your gifts will make room for you and it will bring you before important people. So you have to remember that you have these gifts and these skills and these abilities for a reason. And it's not for you to be selfish. And it's not for you to Hold it all and keep it to yourself. Remember earlier when we talked about how God is giving you gifts and he's giving you the grace to operate in your gifts and in your assignment for other people. Your gifts will make room for you and bring you before important people. Or another translation say your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men. So you, you, you need to use your talents and the gifts that God has given you. If you don't know what that is, that's another prayer point. God would reveal to me my gifts, my talents. And I'm going to tell you something that will help you hear God clearly is you repenting and for not just repenting, but forgiving people. Forgiveness frees you. It's a spiritual antidote. It is a spiritual antidote. The principle and law of for, well, the principle of forgiveness it will literally free you from prison cells and chains that was on you for years. Forgiveness is a power weapon. It is a power tool. And let me tell you how effective it is. When you forgive and you let those people who hurt you go, speak a blessing over them, speak the word of God over them, and you keep doing it, and you, you ask God to give you the spirit of forgiveness if you feel like it's just so much in your heart, and you... you you tell that sycamine tree, I'm casting you into the sea, that root of bitterness. I'm taking, I'm taking you now. And every in this sycamine tree, I'm uprooting you now in Jesus' name. And I command you to be cast into the sea. I no longer want you to operate in my life. You no longer will have power to operate in my life. You take authority over bitterness. Bitterness comes from unforgiveness, resentment. People hurting you, mistreating you, doing you wrong. Just like the earlier what we were talking about with the imposter syndrome. People belittling you. Bitterness can set in your heart from that. And if you don't forgive and let that stuff out and go and release that stuff to the Father in prayer, spend all your time, just pour it out and tell him how it hurt, tell him who did it, tell him how it made you feel, and you release it like he's a personal counselor. Do that enough time to guarantee you, you'll be able to hear God real clear. And then you, when you ask him and pray, it'll be more simple of, you'll be more able to hear him more clearly and then he'll make it simple, more plain to you, I'm sorry, what your gifts and talents are. So if you haven't forgave, listen, this could be why you are not getting clear instructions from God. So do that. That's very vital. I'm not saying that's what it is. Sometimes, you know, the enemy do try to come and mess with your mind. And sometimes double, it could be double-mindedness. Sometimes it could be fear. So you just have to really just make sure you're paying attention to the symptoms so you can know what the root is. Okay? Pay attention to the symptoms so you can know what the root is. Go study what, you know, fear, the symptoms of fear. Go study about, you know, um, what double-mindedness is. Go study about uh, unforgiveness and the causes, I mean, and the the effects of it, you know, so that you can understand what is going on so you can know where you fall at, you know, and you can know what could be blocking you. Okay. So I don't want you to buy a lot that you should not get paid either. Let me talk about this. 
because I struggle with this. There's a lie going around where people are telling the, the children of God, you should not seek or search to get paid for the work that you are doing. There's a lie circling around telling the children of God, you don't, you don't need to be getting paid. All you're doing is just preaching the gospel. What, what would you be getting paid for? Okay. That is a lie from the pit of Hades. So don't buy the lie that you should not get paid because it's the gospel you are selling. You are not selling the gospel. You are literally creating wealth for your family. You are creating generational wealth through pushing your products in. And this is how you'll be able to fund vision that you need to do to help other people to do what you need, you know, and to do your kingdom assignment. You can't do your kingdom assignment and you don't have any funds. So God will allow us to create wealth. He told us in his word, for I have given you the ability to create wealth. He put the gifts and talents in you and he knew you was going to use his principles to create the wealth. So clearly that's not, that's not biblical. So don't let people trip you out. And I am preaching to the choir because I'm talking to Rick and me too on that one. So how will you know what he is asking you to do? I already told you that. So we're going to move down. The next point I want to talk about is if you have an idea, the Bible says, commit thy ways to the Lord and he will establish you. This is this. Fall, I'm sorry, y'all. This falls under the part where how will you know what he is asking you to do? So I already talked about part one and part one was basically on you sitting with him in silence. Make sure that you clear out any clutter through forgiving people, letting it go, praying a prayer of blessings over them, releasing blessings. Tell God to give you a spirit of forgiveness and, and ask him to forgive you of your uh, sins for not forgiving other people. Because the Bible says if you don't forgive other people, your sins are not forgiven. And that is one reason why your prayers can be hindered. That is one way your prayers can be hindered. So we don't want that. We want to get we want to we want God to. Hear us. We want to hear God too. We want to have that communion and that fellowship with God consistently. We don't want nothing blocking us, and unforgiveness will block you. So the next thing I want to talk about on this uh, list of how will you know what He is asking you to do? What is? How do you know the vision that God is calling you to? How do you know the purpose and the the not even necessarily the purpose, but that thing that He's asking you to do? How do you know that? It's what he wants you to do. The thing you're thinking of is what he wants you to do. If you have an idea, the Bible says, commit thy ways to the Lord and he will establish, he will establish you. So this counsels double-mindedness. This counsels the idea of, I don't know, this can cancel out fear because first and foremost, when you get the idea, you say, Father, this is the idea that I've gotten. Father, either confirm it. Uh, let me, let me know that this is what you want me to do. And I never forget that um, one time I remember I had a dream. I will know I was working on some God I knew God had told me to do because he had kept showing it to me in my sleep. So pay attention to your dreams. That's one way God speaks. Um, and then he speaks to you in your own personal way. That's why you got to build a relationship with him so you can know how he speaks to you, which is cultivated and quiet. It's in your personal one-on-one -on -one time. But anyhow, um, and in this dream, I mean, no, uh, so I, I ended up just writing out the vision. And so I, I didn't have every detail that I needed to move forward with the vision. So I remember asking God and I said, Lord, you're going to have to show me if this vision you want me to move on in and you're going to have to give me the next step because I don't know how to do it. And so the same very night I prayed, God gave me a vision in my sleep about that very vision. And that vision helped me to be able to, you know, um, in my in my sleep, helped me to be able to know what to do. And so, um, but had I not committed the vision to the Lord, had I not said, God, help me, had I not went to God and said, God, I have this idea. I don't know what to do with it, when to do what you what I know you told me to do a while ago. You know, um, some of y'all, it's just God already spoke to you. You had dreams, you had visions, you saw it, you knew what God said, but you're just afraid to move out on it because you need all of this extra confirmation. Sometimes the extra confirmation don't come, but if you need extra steps, God will provide that for you. But if he told you to move out on something, when it's your due season, when God is saying, I released you, I released you, do what I've asked you to do. 
you know, then then he'll tell you what to do in that season as well. He's not a partial God. But if you are confused, commit that plan to the Lord in prayer and ask him to show you, is this a thing you need to be doing now? And if not, what is the thing that you need to be doing now? OK, and so this will cancel out double mindedness and fear. And in the Benson uh, com Commentary Bible, it says, commit thy way unto the Lord. All thy cares and business, thy desires and necessities, commend them to God by fervent prayer, referring them to his goodwill and expecting a happy issue of all from him. OK, meaning that you're going to you're going to expect what you were praying and asking God for. So when you commit your business, all of the things you care about, anything that bothers you, you know, your desires. And when you do that through, uh, when you commit them to God through fervent prayer, you are consistent, you are intentional, you are passionate, you are doing this thing with passion and you are just bringing it before the Lord. You know, then as long as it line up with his will, you can expect to receive that. And you can find that in Psalms 37 and 5. And this is found again in the Benson, B-E-N-S-O-N, Commentary Bible. Okay. The next thing. I want to move on down to the next part. Okay. Fear has to bow. It's time for you to face fear face to face. Face it head on. It's time for you to use your authority and remember the perfect love of God. Because if you remember the perfect love that God has for you, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 9 through 18, that perfect love casts out fear. The perfect love of God. In other words, the mature love of God. The love of God being mature in you will actually help fear to leave. Fear will have to be cast out by the love, the perfect love of God that you receive and perceive. You got to be mature. You got to know that God love you despite what it look like. You got to trust and know that God love you despite what you are up against. And if fear is in your face, you got to trust and know that God would not allow anything to happen to you. So this is just false evidence appearing like it's real. Because if I'm in a covenant with God, and if God promised me to keep me, to never leave me, to never forsake me, then I have to understand, trust, and believe in God that because he loved me, he told me that he would never leave me or forsake me. Listen, God has done too many things to prove his love, prove himself to me. I don't have time to let fear do nothing. Fear can't touch me. And if fear try to show up, fear going to dissipate and leave. Guess why? Because of the perfect love of God. That perfect love sets my mind on the things of God. That perfect love of God helps my heart to beat a little bit easier. When I know that God is with me. When I know that God is for me. When I know that God will never leave me or forsake me. And so what this means, family, is that God won't allow anything unaware to just run up on you and kill you or destroy you because his perfect love is too rich, it's too mature, it's too good to fail you. It's too good to allow any demonic entity from the devil himself to knock you off or kill you or destroy you because the Bible says that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. So his perfect love helps you to understand that because I love you, I ain't gonna let nothing come against you and prosper. It may come against you, but it won't prosper. That's, just, that's understanding the perfect love of God. And so that understanding that casts out fear. And then God told us, he said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and the self-discipline. And so because he didn't give us the spirit of fear, we have to look fear in the face and say, listen, you, I don't belong to you and you don't belong to me. God didn't give you to me and I don't receive you. I reject you and I cast you out. I bind your works. I bind your access and I cast you out in Jesus name. I plead the blood of Jesus against you fear. And when fear is a stronghold in your mind and when it don't want to bow, you keep hitting it with the scripture, hitting it with the word of God and plead the blood of Jesus and continue to tell it to leave. And eventually family, fear will leave. It will leave. I know what I'm talking about. Fear will bow. But you got to know your word. You got to believe the blood of Jesus works. You got to believe in the power of Jesus name itself. And you got to believe in the perfect love of God. 
Because when you combine these things, listen, fear don't stand a chance. Do you understand what I'm saying? It don't stand a chance. I came to bring you the kingdom T now. And the kingdom T is that God's perfect love for you is casting out fear. So if you still battling them with fear, you got to realize that, yeah, the enemy going to come and try to make fear be a thing, but you can't bow to it. You got to know how to tell fear, no, know your place. Dissipate and flee in Jesus' mighty name. And he have to do it when you use your authority. He ain't got no other choice. Even if he acts stubborn and don't want to leave, okay, it's a stronghold. We cast down, we pulled out strongholds at every vain imagination. They try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Fear is a vain imagination. And it will be pulled down in the name of Jesus. And according to the blood of Jesus, we deploy the blood against fear. May the perfect love of God arrest fear in your life. May you come to know the perfect love, the mature love of the Father. May you come into a place of maturity in God to where you understand that his love overrules every demonic force that could ever come against you. Because the Bible says if he be for you, if God be for you, he's more than a whole world against you. You know that Satan is the God of this world. And so if he's more than a whole world against you, he's more than Satan and all his imps and all his foes. You seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above. Not just above, far above principalities, far above the devil and all the powers of the enemy. You far above him. But you got to believe it. It takes faith. It takes a paradigm shift. It takes you trusting God. It takes you getting into your secret place, praying fervently, asking God for the things that you struggle with, asking him to give it to you, building intimacy with God, knowing that he going to answer you. Okay? So... The next point, do the challenging things. And you can do this because scripture says in Philippians 4 and 13, I, meaning you and me, can do all things. Matter of fact, in another translation, it says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Who is him? God, Christ. You can do anything that you that you put your mind to, that you believe in, that is in the perfect will of God. You can do it, but you got to do it through him. You can do it through him because he gives you strength to do it, to complete the vision. The next part, get you a vision. Spend time with God first if you don't have a vision. If you have a vision, but you're scared to execute it, we need to deal with fear. And I need to see you in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Right now, we are doing a discounted rate. We normally have our hourly sessions for $187. We are now doing our discounted rate of only $30 an hour. Listen, you cannot beat that price. So if you know that something I'm saying resonates with your spirit and you know that you want to um, you know, step out and do what God has asked you to do, but you just don't know how to. You don't know where to start. After reading all this, you still feel like you need help. I want you to sign up for my one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching, and we will go over. Uh, first, you fill out a Q&A. Once we get that Q&A, and if we see that we are a good fit to work together, then we'll we'll go from there. Um, but I want you to set up a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. Lock in your rate because it will change. And so... Um, as I was saying, you know, get you a vision and write it down. Pray on how to execute that vision. And remember that the Holy Spirit is the helper. The Holy Spirit is the teacher of all things and not just spiritual things, but natural things, too. And he gives us wisdom on how to move and maneuver in life. And like and like um, the Bible says. God has given us everything pertaining unto God and a godly lifestyle. He's literally have, he has literally given us everything that pertains unto living a godly lifestyle. So everything that pertains life and godliness, we have it. God has given it to us through his spirit. So in John 16 and 13, uh, John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, when, however, the spirit comes who reveals the truth about God, he will lead you into all truth. 
So you don't have to try to figure out things on your own. How I'm going to get this vision done? How I'm going to do That's what the job of the Holy Spirit is, to reveal to you how to do those things. But you have to have a relationship with God in order to do that. In Habakkuk 2 and 2, the Bible says, and we are closing, the Bible says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he that read it, it may run over it. Use this when making your client attraction statement. So this is for my business owners. I wrote this part in here as a bonus for you at the end. So if you somebody who need to clarify your vision and you want to get your goals set for 2023, I want you to sign up for my one on one coaching sessions, um, coaching session. And uh, I, I want to help you to be able to clarify which direction to go in regard to your vision. I want to tell you where to start. I've already given you the answers in this. So go back and watch it if you don't feel like doing all of the extra. But if you know that you are somebody who need hands on, one on one, and you want to go deeper, you want to dive deeper, you want to talk about it a little deeper, then that's when I want you to go and um you know, click, go out of this and um, click into the description. And I want you to go ahead and hit that Q&A link where you can answer questions. If we are a good fit, then that's when we'll move forward with our one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching session. Okay. With our one-on-one -on -one coaching session. So, um, because what I just read was a bonus. So for some of you all, Habakkuk 2 and 2 is a literal a business strategy, you know, and God said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that they, that he that read it, it may run over it. And so when they say make it plain upon tables, when you are presenting what you are offering to somebody, you want to make that statement to your, you first got to know your audience. And once you know who you serving, you want to be able to explain what you do in such a simple way that people who come across your channel, will be able to identify with you, your clients, the ones that God is calling you to, the ones that are going to purchase what you have. You want to be able to, you know, um, attract the right clientele, the right people. And so you have to know your tribe, know your audience. See, for me, it's the chosen tribe. And how I know that it's, I'm, I'm called to the chosen tribe is because God chose me. And God chose me to go help other people that are chosen to rise up and step into their rightful place in the earth as curse breakers, as um, bloodline breakers. So, you know, it's time for y'all to step up and rise up and be everything God has caused you to be. And so uh, you got to know your tribe. You got to know who God has called you to. But if you don't spend the time with the with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you all things that you do not know. And so when building your client uh, attraction statement where you are literally making a statement of what you do. Um, it will literally, uh, you know, help you to be able to attract the right people. And so that was the bonus at the end that I wanted to leave you with Habakkuk 2 and 2. It is a principle from the word of God that God has given us to be able to build generational wealth and uh, to be able to attract the right clients. And so um Write that thing out. That's one of those spiritual laws that, you know, in principles uh, that God has given us. Right, writing out, you know, brings it to life. It brings it to pass. It puts the stamp behind it from heaven to say, now this can exist. You give it the power to exist in your world. So write your vision out. Um, make sure that you take the first step. Last but not least, this is not on my list, but take the step. Do what you need to do. Start getting your ducks in a row. Start first with spending time with God. And then once you spend time with God, you know, and once he clarifies, help you clarify your vision. Matter of fact, don't move until you got that vision clarified and you know uh, who you are and you know what you're called to do. Um, because having a vision will be hard if you don't know these things, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what you're called to do, if you don't know your identity in Christ, if you don't know who God is, if you don't, if you're not in the process of getting to know who God is, let me tell you, you won't be able to effectively write a vision because you'll be tossed to and from, you wouldn't know what is what. 
But when you get to know who you truly are at the core, when God reveals to you your true identity, then you will be able to clarify your vision. You'll have a clearer understanding of what you, who you're called to and what God is wanting you to do, even in this season, because you built that intimate connection with him. So uh, remember that I always tell y'all that uh, me surrendering my life to God was the very best thing that I ever did. It helped me to literally launch in heaven into everything that heaven had for me. Heaven eroded. Heaven erupted the moment that I said yes to my assignment. And as I rose up, uh, because the earth was waiting and groaning for me too, but the moment I surrendered to the will of God, I'm telling you that things just begin to take off in my life and I have never been the same. And so I want to help you to do that. If you know you, somebody, after I went over all of these things, talking about the imposter syndrome, talking about fear, talking about what can stagnate you from stepping out and doing what God has called you to do, you are enough, you have enough, but why are you not getting started? I want to help you to be able to uncover uh, your destiny. And I also want to be able to help you to clarify your vision, get a vision um, you know, for your life. I want to show you how to do it again. I already told you in a video how, um, but if you still feel led to book with me, please feel free. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to bite. I'm not going to hurt you. Don't be afraid. Um, as a matter of fact, I encourage you to get a life coach because life coaches, they literally can coach you step by step. They can give you hands on and then give you strategies and tips to show you how to do it. Effective tips to show you how to do it. Um, as a kingdom entrepreneur, I understand that strategy is very important. And without strategies, you won't be able to do what you're trying to accomplish. So uh, let me take the ease out of the toiling for you. Let me take the ease out of accomplishing your goals for 2023 and beyond. And because when you get these strategies that I'm going to give you, you're going to be able to take them in every season and you're going to be able to win in every season when you apply these principles, okay? I call that the gap effect. Gotta apply these principles and don't steal it. But if you want it, tag me in it and say, Girl Plus Kingdom TV said that. Um, but yeah, you can literally go into the description below, book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, go through my other videos, listen to my other videos of empowerment where I'm talking about, you know, um, owning who you are, stepping into your purpose. I have a podcast on my Facebook uh, family group and and I teach you how to find your purpose. So, I mean, it's a lot of free content on here, but if you're ready to go to the next level, go a little bit deeper, go a little bit personal with me behind the scenes. Um, so when you show up, you're showing up strong and you're not showing up weak. You're not showing up without a vision. You're not wavering in your ideas. Listen, I'm the one that you need to be talking to. So it's only $30 an hour for right now. That is definitely going to change because we normally start our rates out at $187 and not $30. But because I want to help you win, I want to help you to soar in the things of God, I decided to do this for my chosen tribe. Okay, y'all in the building. And I want y'all to rise into everything God has called you to step into. And it is not too late. This is the time. You were born for such a time as this. God did not make a mistake on you. God did not forget about you. God did not throw you away. Uh, when is your time when you decide to surrender all yourself to God? That's when your time will be. And so if you know that this is the time right now for you to surrender, go ahead and make that choice. So it'll be in the description below. Listen, I pray that this video has blessed y'all. Um, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. I know that this was longer than usual, but if you um, watch this all the way to the end, I want you to go ahead and just let me know um, that you are part of the chosen tribe. Listen, if you subscribed to this channel, you are part of the chosen tribe. Shout your area out. Where are you from? I want to know more about you. Um, and just go on over to, to the Facebook page where my other blessed family, the Chosen Tribe, we are on Facebook as well. And I want y'all to go on to Facebook and make sure that you like uh, the Facebook uh, page on the girl plus the plus sign Kingdom TV. We are on Instagram and TikTok. So all over. OK, so I love y'all. I will see y'all in the next video. It's my prayer that you will trust God in this season. Step out on faith. Um, write that vision out, get you a goal, get you a plan. Do not procrastinate and do the doggone thing for God's name's sake. 
All right, I'll catch y'all. That's it for the uh, Chosen Tribe today. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love y'all so much. God bless you.